What's going on, cousins? It's me, your boy, your homie, your cousin, your friend, your next door neighbor, maybe even your coworker if we fuck with each other like that. It's your boy AJ Red. I'm back again with another video. Um, and tonight we're gonna talk about the Charleston White fight. Um, but before we get into that, please, if this is your first video, go ahead now and make sure you hit that subscribe button to make sure that when I upload these videos or I go live, you can be one of the first ones to jump into the comment section. Please jump into the comment section and let me know what you thought about the video, the topic, and my opinion. Also, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. That's the like button. Um, I can really appreciate that. And please make sure to share these videos with another friend or family, mem uh, family member. Please do not share these videos with children as it's not for child consumption. I tell y'all that all the time, because if your child run around and talking about some shit, saying one of the more dirty words, I don't even say it up on here. Don't don't charge it to me, because I told you I'm not responsible. But anyway, welcome back, cousins. Um, what's been going on? I hope you guys have been doing well. Um, I've been doing okay myself over here, just chilling and fucking around with the house, you know, folding clothes and that kind of shit, cooking supper and whatnot. But uh, doing pretty good, doing pretty good. And I hope you guys have been doing well as, as well. Um, but anyway, welcome back. So today's topic is going to be, like I said, the Charleston White fight down there in Crockett, Texas. Listen, so I woke up to a video this morning <clears throat> uh, sent to my, my inbox by uh, one of the cousins Showing me pretty much Charleston White getting into this brawl over there in Crockett, Texas, at I think it's what it is, uh, the Crockett, Crockett Civic Center over there in Crockett, Texas. So basically, he had a show last night. As you all know, he's a YouTuber and uh, a comedian. So um, he had the show last night. They invited him, I guess, to, of course, to be the headliner um, of the show. It was a Christmas party, I guess, they, were, they, they had going on, to my knowledge. And so with that, they asked Charleston to be the, the headlining comedian. And uh, somewhere along the way, things took a, took a quick turn. So somewhere in the audience was an uncle-nephew duo, right? Um, they came out to see the show, and uh, they were right down in front. Now, I always tell people, what used to be one of the worst things being in front, the comedian to roast the fuck out your ass and have you looking bad and feeling stupid and wanting your money back by the time you left. Nowadays, it seems like it comes to shit like this. Getting your ass whooped with a poinsettia, you know, and a microphone. So, these two gentlemen, the nephew and the uncle, were standing out in the audience. So, I'm not pretty qu quite sure who actually started the heckling, but I think it was Charleston. Y'all know Charleston uh, White is, 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 is known for starting shit, kicking up dust, and giving a motherfuck. So, I'm thinking maybe it was him because it looked like the report read some shit like he came out on the stage and he was saying some shit about fucking with them saying they were lovers or some shit like that because the uncle had his arm around the nephew. Now, me and my nephews, we hang out like them. We, we haven't seen each other in a while. We we drink. We, we have a couple of shots. We catch up. I play with my great nieces and nephews and all that different stuff. Talk to their wives, you know, and get, you know, catch up on family business when I, when I, when I see my family back home. So I don't see this being out of the ordinary and why he would call them, you know, basically alluding to the fact that they were some were gay lovers in the show. Now, maybe they could have been. Maybe they were going under an assumed uh, uh, position as uncle and nephew. But maybe they weren't as well. So at some point, he called them out on that. And then when they said something back to him, uh, they rebuttaled. He then went on in on them having uh, the Lakers jerseys on. He said, why, you know, why the fuck you motherfuckers come in here? You niggas come in here with some Lakers jerseys on. And everybody was coming this motherfucker, you know, dressed casually with cowboy hats and shit on, you know, the Texas way. So, um, more uh, dialogue took place. I think the dudes were saying some call. He was calling him a pussy motherfucker. He was telling the dude he a pussy motherfucker out in the audience. And telling him, you know, holding up the stack of cash, telling him, fuck him, you already paid for my show. You know what I'm saying? So you already here, motherfucker. So what you gonna do is sit around, sit around and, and watch the performance or get the fuck out. You know, I don't give a fuck about your feelings or what you have to say about um, me or my show or how I do my shit. Basically, basically is what Charleston White was telling him. So the dude asked, the nephew asked Charleston to let him come up on stage. And of course, he wasn't going to invite him up on stage. You know, you, you know you're in an altercation and shit. And the dude was pretty big. As y'all know, Charleston White ain't no big motherfucker. He's like a little chili wimp, you know. But, uh, but I tell you what, though. 
That little motherfucker there, he got some heart. Charleston White reminds me of my, my uh, stepdaddy. Uh, dead and gone. He reminded me of my stepdad. My stepdad was a small man, but that motherfucker wasn't scared of shit. He, he might have known in the end that if, you know, if it got to a physical point, that you might have the physicality to fuck him up real good. But he just didn't give a fuck, you know? He didn't back down from nobody. And I'm just saying to myself, this just seems to be Charleston White, you know, he reminds me of my stepfather. He just say what the fuck he want to say, especially if he get to drinking. You know what I'm saying? He get to smoke his weed. He say what the fuck he want to say to whoever the fuck he want to say it to. And clearly he wanted to back it up because them motherfuckers be quick to leap. When that man come to the edge of that stage, y'all, if y'all watch that video, that man came to the edge of that stage and while he and Charleston was arguing, arguing, Charleston picked up a coin set. And now y'all know this was a Christmas party. You got to be a crazy motherfucker. And I ain't gonna lie, I agree with you. You got to be a crazy motherfucker. You down there, and you got a motherfucker standing over. You got to be stupid, honestly, to be down there and a motherfucker standing over. You can probably bop you in your face. But Charleston took that potty plant and told him, he said, I bust your, <laughs> I bust your motherfucking head, motherfucker. See, that's some shit I would have did. I ain't gonna tell y'all no lie, don't condone no violence, but if if I, if I got to be approached, you got to go and get, mama said, you got to get the first lick or, or the second one might be the last lick. So if a motherfucker approach you, I guess you got to do something. And Charleston White was in that, he was in that frame of mind. That motherfucker took that porn center and yacked it back just a little bit and took it back over there to New York or Carolina somewhere and flung that bitch and bust that man right in the motherfucking head with that, pot, with that potted plant. I mean, like my grandma said, he bust the fuck out of him with that potted plant. You feel me? Y'all saw the video. I know y'all wouldn't looked at it. Bust him in the head with the potted plant. Then when the man started to crawl up on the stage, you know, Charleston stepped back a little bit, you know, he stepped back a little bit because he was like, maybe this motherfucker about to get up on the stage, which if he was smart, he threw, he took it through that, <laughs> that microphone. <laughs> he took and slung that motherfucking microphone. But my thing is, you should have stayed to the edge of the stage somewhere close by. So you got to bop, be bop to bop the fuck out of his head with that motherfucking microphone. So he stayed off the stage. You know what I'm saying? But motherfucker rushed the stage. The man rushed the stage. I think it was the nephew that got up on stage first that went in that Lakers jersey right there. Charleston backed up a little bit while he was, he, he tried to aim right. He got low with it and slung that motherfucker and bopped him in the face again with that microphone. So I know already big boys already mad about that potty plant busting the fuck out. And Mother Nature had to knock his motherfucking ass off. I'm quite sure he didn't have a night plan to come down there and get on the mic. And Charleston offered it to him. He said he wanted to come on the stage. He said he wanted to get on the stage, so he just brought the stage down. <laughs> <laughs> he brought the stage down to you, my brother. Bust him in the motherfucking face with the microphone. Then Charleston backed up and grabbed one of them chairs he used to have back down there at the reception hall with them iron legs to that bitch with some cushion in it so, you know, people like me that ain't got a whole lot of ass can sit on it for a little while longer than 15 or 20 minutes. He took that motherfucker and rallied back. And just when he was getting ready to, I guess, you know, engage and lock, the dude tacking him, and as you can see, the chair went flying another way. But I tell you what, I will see. I see a little, a little bit of myself in Charleston White because I can honestly tell you, I've been in instances where I've been crowded and jumped before, and I'm the kind of bitch anything up in this motherfucker that I can pick up that I feel like I knock a couple of you bitches down. You know what I'm saying? Slaying that motherfucker across the room. You got the motherfucking Babe Ruth some shit. You know. And bust a motherfucker side the head. Those were all good options. That potty plant was a good place to start because <laughs> that was a good place to praise him right there. Merry Christmas. You know what I'm saying? But I really think... <sighs> Let me just finish the story. So when they rushed Charleston on the stage, they got him down on the ground. So we all assume that basically, oh boy, they got him down. They don't, they don't beat the shit out of him, but some dude called Do Baby or Do Berry or somebody, uh, uh, in Charleston's words, knocked the fuck out of the nephew or the son and damn near slept him. You know, damn near put him to sleep. Because we saw it go down that way, I honestly started researching and looking. I'm like, oh my God. If Charleston White is anywhere making any videos right now about last night's events or any posts have been posted with pictures, I'm sure he looked like me be motherfucking Mumford. He look, he looked like Louis the Lumper. Henry Hickey. Yeah. 
Norris Naughty Cone. Yeah, that kind of shit beat the fuck up, you know. Y'all remember how Martin looked when he went that, well, went a couple of rounds with Tommy, uh, Tommy Hitman Hearns over there on, on Martin? When he beat his <laughs> when Tommy had to beat his motherfucking ass and knocked him out of them space boots he was wearing down there to the, uh, he, he bent the box with that man. Y'all remember that episode? That's how I was expecting uh, Charleston White to be looking this morning when I saw a picture of him, when I started looking and Googling and searching and, you know, putting on my Angela Lansbury hat. And getting to, uh, putting on my Matlock shoes and my Perry Mason suit. You know, I started getting all kind of shit in my mind and trying to figure this thing out. But lo and behold, Charleston was somewhere sitting up eating motherfucking breakfast. I probably just smoked his morning blunt, you know, talking shit. It, even in the night before, on, on the ride out of the event, he was still posting videos saying he wasn't fucked up at all. We would have thought he'd have been lumped up and fucked up. Motherfucker ain't had a scratch on him. So clearly, you know... You, 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 to the uncle and the nephew, the gay couple or whatever the thing is, it's like sometimes you go to these comedy shows, y'all got to be ready for what the fuck comes your way. The man was roasting you. At the end of the day, I feel like if they were gay, they would have roasted his ass back. It wouldn't have been no confrontation. He probably would have been ready to jump out there in the audience and fuck them up because, like I tell you all the time, gays read people like uh, T.S. Madison said, like a good book and a bad person. You can't fuck with us in that department. Just period. And if you are able to, that means you probably nine times out of ten you got a good gay on your side. You know what I'm saying? You got a good LGBTQ plus member on your team. And they done taught you some shit. You know what I'm saying? But nevertheless, Charleston White was on multiple platforms last night after the event. And then even up until this morning telling us, listen, we whooped them motherfuckers ass. We went down there to Texas and whooped the whole motherfucking city. He said, me and, 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 and two other motherfuckers, just three niggas whooped about four or five bitches. He said, and I ain't have no security. And, and and quite frankly, that surprised me because for a person like Charleston that go around talking all the shit that he be talking and fucking with all the people he be fucking with and saying all the shit that he be saying in today's climate, the way people are moving nowadays, it, you would think that he would have some type of security. He said, but fuck that. You got to be your own security. He said, he don't need no security. But in the end, I, I honestly believe you need to hire you some security, um, Charleston, because that 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 was a real close cut, and like the girl that on the video that I saw when she said, uh, she told I guess a homegirl and then she like, bitch, we got to go, bitch, we need to get out of here, we got to go, and the camera started shifting and hauling ass the other way to the left. She said we got to get the fuck out of here because they didn't check nobody, and she was absolutely right. I could have been that bitch in the audience. Let's get the fuck out of here because if I know they ain't checked them pocketbooks and pat them motherfucking dudes down and get them the metal detector test and all that shit to get up in this bitch. You right motherfucking sure. I'm finna exit stage left and get the fuck up out of here. Because at the end of the day, sticking around trying to find out the end of some shit is what calls your end sometimes. I ain't got to be the bitch around here to get the whole report. I, get, I What I got is good enough. Somebody got to live to tell the rest of the story or even post the shit in the first motherfucking place. I don't want to be no hero. No. I want to be the reporter. Fuck the hero portion. I want to be the bitch that's doing just what I'm doing right now. Sitting in front of the motherfucking camera giving y'all the fights. Sitting on the camera reporting the bit now east to y'all because there ain't no motherfucking way I'd have been sitting up in there like she said after all that broke out and that many motherfuckers was able to get on the stage. It was it, it, it now went from a verbal altercation to a physical altercation between a couple of people to now basically a fucking brawl. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know what the fuck is going on with these celebrities and shit like that that's getting out here, getting these gigs and stuff. It's okay to speak your mind and stand down in your truth. But sometimes you just need to, uh, TKO, you need to let that shit go. Tasha K was just over there in some shit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, about to get jumped on by a room full of transgender women. So, at the end of the day, it just seems like, well, she was smart enough to have security too. She knows she liked to run her motherfucking mouth. So she was like, ain't, ain't no bitch finna bop upside her motherfucking head. But at the end of the day, it pays to move with a sound mind uh, when you're in that business because so many are, are rising rising so quick. So many new stars are coming on the scene so quick and some have been there for so long to shit we damn near forgot about it. They got to make this stuff relevant in front of our faces. But at the end of the day, some of the ones that are rising so fast are falling just as quick as they're rising. And... With Charleston White, of course, I'm sure he's still going to get business. I'm sure he's still going to get gigs. I'm, I'm pretty sure people are still going to book him. 
just like people are still booking Tasha K, just like people still booked Wendy Williams for different events, you know. So just because you are, just because you're you're you you are in a position to secure these positions and secure the bag, sometimes you you need to dial yourself back a little bit. Um, I I think this this altercation could have ended a whole lot better. I think it would have been an, uh, a situation of again. Y'all know how Charleston White is. Y'all know how he talks to people and shit like that. So why would you go to a show where Charleston White is a headliner and you're going to sit close to the motherfucking stage and when this man begins to roast your motherfucking ass like a Christmas duck, then you want to get all mad now you want to beat this motherfucking converse off his fucking feet. This, I mean, the shit just don't add up to me. And like I said, we as a society, now it really has come to a point to where People like myself that are comedians, we are afraid to still like fully come out of our shell because we're going to be afraid of uh, offending somebody because we actually still have a heart and we still um, we still move with people's emotions or their feelings also in mind. You know what I'm saying? But everybody everybody don't do that. But that too is is just an example of part of society being able to stifle your talent. I mean, because at the end of the day. They always said laughter was the best medicine. I mean, my thing is if me and my dude, first of all, would have stepped off in the cut, even if we had been goofy enough to buy some fucking tickets to a fucking Charleston White motherfucking event and come down there and sit up to the front of the goddamn stage, you know, we would be kind of ready if we, if we got fucked with. You know what I'm saying? My mouth alone would probably put Charleston White to shame, especially after a couple of motherfucking shots of Henny. You got me fucked up. You ain't finna sit up here and roast me. You can roast me on my lifestyle. That's all you have because as in my look when I step out of this motherfucker, you ain't gonna better roast that either. So at the end of the day, y'all could have had a nice little comedy battle real quick for the one time, and maybe by the end of the show, that that person, that guy, and or his uncle could have been brought up on the stage, you know, to shake it out or handshake it, dap it out or whatever, and keep on moving. It's just like y'all moving the same way these women are, some of these ladies are in, 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 in this Me Too movement. Y'all here saying Me Too and, and, and Black Power and all this different shit, but then y'all turn around and go back in your own neighborhood and your own kind amongst your own kind, and y'all want to whoop a bitch ass. Y'all got too many cans of whoop a bitch sitting around just waiting to be open. I mean, just a whole stock of whoop ass, you know, in a can, just waiting for y'all to crack that bitch open on anybody. And I mean... There was a time, day and time, where you can possibly do that because people were okay with getting down in the trenches and, and, and actually, you know, putting up their fucking hands and getting down there and squabbling with you real quick. The worst might have come out of it is the bitch might have lost a tooth, got a, a busted lip, a black eye, some shit. But like Pockenham say over on Friday, but you live. You live to fight another day. Stuff like this now es escalates very quickly as the girl in the video was thinking. Anybody could have quickly pulled out a nine, you know, shots already fired, or even a knife or some shit like that, and somebody could have lost their life over some fuckery-ass shit. And that's what I'm saying. Y'all have to still think about what y'all doing. Charleston, there is nothing wrong with you being yourself, but I think sometimes people look at what you do as a disrespect to them. And in our culture, for some reason, we we, we, we have this complex that if you come for me in a certain aspect of my life or come for me, period, bitch, I'm ready to kill you. Instead of saying, man, I, you don't even know me. I don't know. You probably once I leave here, I won't ever meet your motherfucking ass again. And and it's one of those things, too. Again, you have to have been a fan at some point to come your ass down in the first place. You ain't come down there just for the drinks and the chips and the goddamn finger sandwiches. So you must have been some kind of fan of Charleston White's. You and your uncle. And I'm saying this, if y'all paying attention to what I'm doing, I'm going back and forth getting both of their motherfucking asses because both parties are wrong. Y'all are grown men. Y'all grown men and y'all here knocking each other's motherfucking Mario coins out when you come out here to just make the motherfucking money. You came out here and paid a little, a little something because I'm pretty sure Charleston White's concerts ain't, ain't charging a lot. And honestly, for what he's given, I know for a fact that me and my dynamic... Versus his dynamic and what he stands for and how he likes to go in and fuck with the LGBTQ community and all that. I'm not about to even support that. I ain't even fucking with it. I'm not finna buy no ticket go to go over there and say I support him. Now, if 
even if he had those thoughts and he kept those to himself and he wasn't so boisterous about it and so vocal about it, at the end of the day, maybe his stand-up, I can probably see that as 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 as, as basically um a comrade, a, a colleague, I could actually go out and support his business and what he's doing, even though I may not know all the facts. So sometimes you get more, again, I say more bees with honey than you do vinegar. Some people tell me, I don't give a fuck. That's why your ass is failing. That's why shit that you're doing in your life is failing or always got some kind of hiccups or fuck ups always attached to it because you're going out here giving out Fucked up shit, fucked up energy, treating people in any old kind of way, and you feel like the chickens are never going to come home to fucking roost. They always do. They always come home to roost. I don't give a fuck who you think you are, what kind of power you hold, who you think you're being guarded by, you know, what your community is like and how they're guarding you. At some point, if you continue down the rabbit hole like Padilla and all the rest of these motherfuckers over here in Hollywood doing silly ass shit, you, pe you play stupid and silly ass motherfucking games. You get stupid, silly ass fucking prizes. And we're supposed to sit around and, and feel sorry for you when you've been given the opportunity that most of us wish we had. You out here banking and making the motherfucking money a lot of us wish we can bank. You made it to that point. If you haven't made it to that point, you are still ascending. But you're too fucking blinded by what you're what you're already getting and offered to where you feel like there's no no line to be drawn. There's there there's no honor amongst thieves. Or should I say you think there's honor amongst thieves? It's, it's it just gives a fucked up perception of the community as a whole to see you two over here fighting like a goddamn bunch of nuts over here, you know, having a whoop ass contest. Beating the shit out of each other. Now, guaranteed. Now, wait, 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 wait. Before y'all start judging me and acting like, it, you know, the shit was funny. <laughs> let's just be let's just be honest. The shit was funny. And that's so sad that I feel like as a human being or a human, or a human person or whatever the fuck you want to call it. Uh, I'm saying whatever you want to call it. Like, I'm not a human being crazy, bitch. You know what I'm saying? But as being a human being, it's crazy to say that that feeds into the, 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 the fact that they're saying when they look at statistics and shit like that, that dopamine levels go up in people's brains when we see shit like this. It's sad as a country that we get a hard on when we see people doing st stuff like this. He fucked around there and found out. He done beat him with the porn set him. He done bumped him with the mic. Then he had to take him down at a, to Montgomery and take that chair and he was about to knock his motherfucking ass back there in the back of that room somewhere in that audience. Had he got a good, had he got a good hand on him before old boy, like he said, went to his high school tackle days and charged the fuck, because he tackled the shit out of him. Tackled him so hard, you see that chair flew the other way. But had he had a good grip on him with them little bitty ass raccoon hands and had that son of a bitch, first of all, you should have had it by the legs. You should have had it by the legs or the weight, because it had a little curve in the top of it, I believe. Either you should have had it by the legs and get you a nice good grip, listen, and swing that motherfucker like, like a baseball bat, and he was going to knock his motherfucking ass into, into 2024. He was going <laughs> to see Christmas 2024. He was going to wake up confused like a motherfucker had he got him with that chair. I really believe that because he was so little, he was trying to swing it and then trying to get himself together to get some energy to bring, <laughs> some muscle to bring that bitch back. He was going to fly swat the shit out of him with that motherfucking shit. <laughs> He was going to tennis ball racket the fuck out of him with that chair. Yeah, he was going to your Harris his motherfucking ass with that chair. He was going to teach him how to dougie. You th <laughs> oh, <laughs> he was going to, yeah, baby, listen, by the time, he, if he had connected with that chair, I honestly believe that old boy or whoever this was, his uncle, they was going to wake up here in Jingle Bells. Oh, listen, and it was already at a Christmas event, Jingle Bells, you know, it was going to be a silent night for that motherfucker. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, it was going to be a silent night. But, again, this to me, again, <laughs> I be trying to be serious, and y'all be fucking me a lot of times. Y'all like, like when I be on the bullshit, but I be on the bullshit, I be trying to be serious and get the story out the way. Okay.
But with the way he slung that point setter though, a, a potted plant, you you did a whole Looney Tunes move and bust a bitch side of the head with a potted plant. That plant is not, it wasn't meant for that, Charleston. That That is not why they set that out there. They set that out there for declaration. <laughs> you, you done took the people's declaration. You done fucked up the mic system and you done got your money and you done, you done beat it like Michael Jackson. Bitch. Just like Michael Jackson, Charleston, I guess you, you was up in that bitch asking who's bad. Listen, hopefully, I don't know. I don't know if the man going to try to sue him, if the uncle and son duo or the gay couple going to sue him or what, you know, for any kind of damage, damages or anything like that. I don't know where this is going to go, but I tell y'all, when I got up this morning over my morning coffee and I was sitting down when I was numb your horror and gay and this stuff, baby, when I when that came up on my feed, I like to spit my coffee all over the motherfucking kitchen. Cause it was, let me tell you. Beat me in the trail. It's going down. But listen, that ch that chick's about to come down and knock his motherfucking noodle loose. Was about to knock all the meat out of his motherfucking chalupa. You feel me? Anyway, y'all, I'ma go and give it a risk because I, I ain't got no business laughing at this kind of stuff. This is violence, and I don't condone no violence. And then. <laughs> I'm done with this. I'm done. Anyway, if this is your first video, please go ahead now and hit the subscribe bell so that when I decide to go live or upload one of these videos, you can be one of the first ones to receive it. And please make sure to drop down in the comment section and leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought about the topic. Let me know what you thought about my opinion. Let me know what you thought about the video overall. And please make sure to hit that like button. That's the thumbs up button. I would appreciate that a lot. That really helps me out. And please make sure to share these videos. Share with somebody you know. Share with a motherfucker you don't know. Share with somebody you like. Share with some, some bitch you don't give two fucks about because nine times out of ten, I'll probably be the thing that bring y'all together. Good conversation. Good comedy conversation. That's what, it, that's what it is. Good comedy conversation. Good comedy conversation. Yeah. But uh, I got to get out of here. Uh, guys, I got another video and some other shit I need to be doing. I probably need to go in this kitchen and cook something. I done made a cake and all kind of shit. So... I'll be over here cooking like I got a family of motherfucking six. And ain't nobody up in this motherfucking head at the time. Uh, well, most of the time, honestly. I'm just up in here. But anyway, uh, I love you guys so, so much. Um, make sure you love yourselves real good, first and foremost. And make sure you love on those who love you the same in return. Because we ain't got time for no laying yet or no bullshit. All right, cousins. Love you guys. To the next video. Peace.